Good morning or afternoon or evening, everybody, wherever you are. This is uh, an online yoga class um, using actually the um, model of Intelligent Movement Forever, which is, is my brand of yoga. And um, it, today is March 30th, 2020. We're going to start lying on your back on a mat or a beach towel. It would be nice if you have a stack of washcloths or a blanket under your, your neck. We're gonna go for uh, a neutral cervical spine and I'll talk about that later. I wanna talk a little bit about me first because this is, uh, there's some new people on here. I've, my name is Via Anderson, and I've been teaching uh, yoga for 20 years, and I've been teaching online yoga for two or three years, and um, I'm a grandma, and uh, I live in Puerto Vallarta, Mexico. Uh, I last live in the U.S. in Los Angeles, California area. Um, a little bit about use, using Zoom, you're gonna be muted. And if you want to ask a question, use the chat box. And Kathy Hampton is going to be our student model and make sure that you pinned her video. So find her in the little pictures and then go up to her uh, menu with the three dots and pin her. And so then you can watch her while I, I coach her through the, the practice today. I want to give you a few um, tips for moving uh, intelligently and in this practice one, the first is to move slowly and moving slowly actually trains the brain to move um, well and intelligently uh, yoga is a uh, by definition the connection or un unity of mind and body and moving slowly actually epitomizes that that kind of a practice. So this is not a, a calisthenics class or even an exercise class. We're really learning to be aware of the body as, as, it, as it moves. Become aware of your movement and your breath, making that connection. And if there's, repeat the uh, movement that I'm talking about three to six times. Listen to your own body. I'll try to wait for you. If you need more time, let me know. I'm gonna check the chat box in a minute. There's a question. If pain arises, this is the last tip. If pain arises, make your movement smaller or slower or stop altogether. Wait for the next uh, movement that I'm talking about and rest and breathe. So let me check the chat box and see what someone says. Oh, you can double tap her picture to pin her. Cool. I think we have a techie in the audience. <laughs> yeah, I didn't know that. Wow. Thanks, thanks. That's very cool to know. Tap her pips her twice. Okay, let's start. Supine, lying on a mat, knees bent, feet on the floor. We're going to start with a vagus nerve reset. This is really the, the my favorite stress reduction, my favorite speedy stress reduction technique. Kathy's going to put her hands behind her head and interlace her fingers. Rest the occipital ridge, the base of the skull, into the um, hands, the clasp hands, the elbows wide. Stay here. Don't move anything except the eyeballs. And then with your eyes open or closed, look, shift your eyeballs to the right. Shift your eyeballs to the right and then wait for a swallow, yawn, gulp, or sigh. So this is not, this is involuntary. You don't have to make it happen. If you're new at this practice, uh, you might have to practice it a few times before it'll happen for you. But once you've swallowed, sighed, gulped, or yawned, come back to the center and shift your eyes to the left, eyeballs to the left. Don't move anything else. And wait. A 
Come back to center and repeat this two, two, two more times, left and right. This is a, an interesting practice because you're using the, the um, eyeballs, the nerves in the eyes to um, move the occipital nerves and the, the vagus nerve, which is the, the biggest nerve in the body and actually is the regulator of our nervous system. So we spend a lot of time in fight and flight. Um, that's the, nation, the international global pattern. And this breath, this vagus nerve reset will return us to the healing, restoring, resting side of the nervous system, of the vagus nervous nerve. Come on back, finish it up. Just know this is something you can do wherever you are. You don't have to be lying down like this. This is probably the easiest way to do it, but you could be um, seated or standing. You don't have to put your head behind, your hands behind your head. All you have to do is keep your, the rest of your body still and, and move your eyeballs. The next thing we're gonna do um, today is some breath work. And this breath work is breath work that I've selected that can help with the lungs and the diaphragm and uh, boost your immunity, your immune system and your respiratory system, all of which uh, probably are important things that can happen on, um, it should happen with COVID-19 in our um, midst. So breath work, I want you to just, you can take your arms down by your side. And watch your breath. So this is not, this is not a change of breath. This is just watching the breath you, you came here with. Watching the inhale and the exhale. This allows your entire body and your mind to enter the room, enter the virtual classroom. I'm going to write an article on, uh, on breath work in the age of uh, coronavirus. Um, if any of you want to um, read it, it'll be on my website. You can, you can go up to my Intelligent Movement Forever website, intelligentmovementforever.com, and sign up for the email, and then you'll get on the list that sends out my, my next blog. Um, the next kind of breathing I'd like you to do is a rib cage breathing. And in order to um, make this uh, you aware of the rib cage breathing, go ahead and bring your hands, be, uh, wrap them around your chest, your rib cage, just below your chest. Thumbs down, fingers up. And then take a, take a deep inhale and watch the rib cage expand side to side. And then on the exhale, it retreats. And the next time, add awareness of the rib cage expanding front to back. So your rib cage expands on exhale. It expands side to side and 
front to back. Nice deep rib cage or thoracic breath. So limit, try, to, try to make sure the breathing is at the rib cage, not the belly or the, um, up at the chest. So, and this is where we can exercise the diaphragm and, and um, create more room and healthy, more healthy breathing in the rib cage, in the lungs. The last thing the last breath work in the breath work segment here is we're going to do a diaphragm massage. So go ahead and make a little claw with your hands and take your um, hands, your claw and push it underneath the rib cage, the bottom of the rib cage. You don't want to be on the organs. What you're doing is massaging the diaphragm, which is, is an organ, but I don't want you to be massaging other organs. <laughs> so massage your diaphragm, which actually can get stuck at the rib cage here. And so this is actually going to free up your breath. So all the way along the rib cage from the sternum, all the way down around to the bottom of the rib cage and then back with your little claw fingers, just grabbing, uh, grabbing and grabbing and grabbing and pushing in and up. And um, you can do this back and forth a couple times. And after you've done this, and this is a great practice, by the way, you know, where whenever you're watching TV or, or uh, something like that, this, this is a great practice to start to pay attention to and be kind to and improve the, the, uh, and activate the um, diaphragm. So Kathy's going to go ahead and find a place and grab. So with her little claw fingers, grab and now breathe. So inhale. The inhale breath is going to push your fingers up and out of the, the place they were. And then exhale and the fingers can return and grab. And so breathe. This is a diaphragm massage, really. And breathe. And exhale and inhale. And then just pause here and see how that felt. Take, take note of what's, what's been happening in your diaphragm. And then bring, you, um, bring your hands behind your head again. Clasp your fingers. Create a cradle for your occipital ridge, the base of your skull. And go ahead and nod, chin up, chin down. So chin goes about 10% back and then 10% forward. This is called the C1 glide. It's the glide of the skull over the, the first cervical spine. 
uh, vertebra, first cervical um, vertebra in the cervical spine. This is a, a, a movement that gets lost. And uh, so this, this can start to, this kind of work, work here, at, working on the cervical spine in this way and the next move will help you with your posture and with text neck. It'll counteract text neck. So cerv cervical glide, just back and forth. Don't go too far back. Don't hyperextend the neck too far. But just a little nod, nodding up and down. And then stop that and press the back of your skull, the base of your occipital ridge into your hands. This is, a this is called head ramping with resistance. Or I call it head ramping. It's a version of the chin tuck. I don't want you to think about chucking the bone. I want you to think about pressing the base of your skull, the occipital ridge, into your hands. The chin nods. And then staying there for a breath or two, and then releasing. And press again. So notice that the chin does drop, but it drops because you've, you've um, pressed your, the skull into your hands or the floor, whatever you're pressing into. So this C1 glide and this uh, head ramping are two movements that I highly recommend that you do on a regular basis to try to counter um, rounded shoulder, shoulders and and the the uh, the the lump dowager's hump on the back of your head and foot and text neck so any of those things this is a practice that you can address, help address those and i i include them in almost every, every class you never graduate from from these kinds of moves. Go ahead and stop that. And we're going to do some hypopressives, which is a practice of breath and pelvic floor, core and pelvic floor work. It's a breathing pattern. Um, you're going to stay right where you are. And bring your, so bring your toes up and your heels stay on the floor. You can crawl your heels a little farther out, Kathy. We're gonna do a bridge and then a breathing pattern. So the breathing pattern after three breaths is to hold your breath out, no breath, for 10 counts. <coughs> we're, gonna also, we're gonna do this with a bridge pattern, although there are 23 other hypopressive patterns, but this is, this is a great one. And a bridge is a nice, nice thing to be doing anyway. So go ahead. And take three breaths, inhale, and exhale. Inhale, and exhale. Inhale, exhale. No breath, hold your breath out, lift your hips, and with no breath, I'm going to count to 10. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. 10. Inhale, and then exhale, drop your hips. We'll do it again, but we're gonna add arms overhead. So you're gonna take your arms overhead when your hips go up. Overhead by your, by your ears, if you can get them, as far as you can get them, without pain or discomfort. Inhale. Exhale. Inhale. Exhale. Inhale, 
Exhale, hold your breath out, no breath, lift your hips, bring your arms overhead. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Inhale, and then exhale, the arms come down, the hips come down. Let's go ahead and roll over on your stomach for a little bit of, um, well, we'll do a little bit of um, work with the diaphragm actually um, and, and some back extension work here. So go ahead and you can start in a crocodile resting pose. So just crossing your arms in front of you and resting your head. You can look right or left. You don't have to look straight down. And just stay here and take a minute to breathe and think about your practice so far. And maybe you can notice as you breathe, this is a good place to practice belly breathing. Let's do a couple belly breaths because here the belly it meets the floor, so you, you ha have a little bit of feedback for belly breathing. So breathe into your belly, inhale, it pushes against the floor, and exhale, it retreats. Belly breathing, just take three more belly breaths. This is a little different. Make a distinction between this and breathing into your rib cage. This is probably a more relaxing breath. And then come up into, onto your elbows like a yoga sphinx, elbows directly under your shoulder. Kathy's looking for her glasses. That would be what I would be doing if I were on the floor like that. <laughs> So, uh, elbow propping, what happens is your upper back is like a sling between the shoulders and the, uh, the waist, and this actually opens up the respiratory system in a way that actually you won't get anywhere else. So this is a great movement. Um, you can practice breathing here. You can drop your chin a little bit, Kathy. So when you're... Whenever you're um, working with, with alignment, you want to try to align your cervical spine in line with your uh, thoracic spine and your um, lumbar spine. So this looks pretty good. Just take a couple more breaths here, just knowing that you're giving your um, diaphragm more room than it usually has. More breathing exercises. And then go ahead and bring yourself down to the floor with your arms beside you, beside your hips, palms up. We're going to do a back extension, Pilates style, actually, but one of my favorites. You're going to inhale to prepare. Can everybody hear me? I hope you can hear me. Well, if Kathy can hear me, I guess everybody will be able to hear me. Um, I had a, a previous, my, my previous computer, which crashed, and I replaced. Um, the volume wouldn't come up. On, on the, but I think it's a lot better on this new, new, new device. Inhale to prepare. And exhale, lift your arms, your chest, and your head. Stay here. And inhale to prepare, and exhale to return to the floor. So you're going to stay up for a couple breaths, and then come back down. Inhale to prepare. Exhale, lift the chest, the arms, the head, 
Kathy, you can drop your chin a little bit to create some a better alignment there. Unless it feels like if if it feels painful, <laughs> don't don't do do it a little. And then inhale to prepare and exhale to return. We're gonna add arms. So we're, on, we're gonna do the same thing and then add on airplane. So bring your arms out to the side and um, that's what it's gonna look like. But it's in two steps. So inhale to prepare. Exhale, lift your chest, your upper back, your head. Inhale to prepare. Exhale, the arms come out into an airplane. Stay here, take a couple breaths. Inhale to prepare, and then exhale to return everything to the floor. We're gonna do that again. This is great for posture, great for strengthening the upper back the upper back extensors, the muscles that run along the upper spine and the upper back. Inhale to prepare. Exhale, lift. And stay here for a couple breaths. And then inhale and the arms come out to the side. And exhale, stay here, take some breaths. And inhale to prepare and exhale to return. Go ahead and come into a child's pose with wide knees or close knees. If you need to, you can put a pillow or a block under your head or under your um, butt. <coughs> Some people, the, uh, the butt may not reach the heels. But this should be a very nice uh, lower back stretch. It's a resting pose. Climb your, walk your arms a little farther forward and stay here and rest and breathe. Catch up, let your body catch up to your movement, your mind catch up to your movement. And then go ahead and crawl your arms, both arms to the right, so you're staying in your child's pose. Crawl your arms to the right. Nice. You should feel a nice stretch on the left. Well, for Kathy, it's going to be on the left. There's a, a muscle that runs along the side, that side of the body, the outside of the back, latissimus dorsi, often neglected, and you can stretch it here. And just crawl your arms forward to get a bigger stretch. Forward from where you are. And then come back to center. And then go to the right. Oh. And to the left, sorry. Go to the other, let's go to the other side. Make your, straighten your arms, crawl them forward, Kathy. So you, and then actually try to create more stretch along the latissimus dorsi on, on, on the right side for you. So just crawling your arms forward and creating more stretch. You should, you should be able to feel this. And come on back. Come up to Seated. Come up to a, um, a floor seated position. We're going to review. Um, I encourage people to sit on the floor. Um, you're at home, you're watching TV, you're um, working on your computer. Uh, 
sitting on the floor and then getting up off the floor or sleeping on the floor or anything you do, anything you do, I call it the low life, <laughs> the low life <laughs> method, anything you do where it has you getting up and down off the floor a lot um, actually helps uh, juice up the knees and the hips. And so one of the reasons we lose a lot of, we have a lot of hip and knee injuries is because we've stopped moving, and we've stopped squatting, and we've stopped getting up and down and up and down. So I'm, I'm inviting you to find a, I'm gonna show you, Kathy's gonna show you three floor seated, three or four floor seated positions. So the one that people are most familiar with probably is cross-legged. Um, but if you, if this is uncomfortable for you, you can do several things. You can sit on a brick. And in each, each time you're in a floor seated position, practice good posture. So if you're rounding here, just like you're rounding in your couch, it's no bueno. So, as they say in Mexico, no bueno. Um, so, sit up with your spine moving up, lifting up out of your sits bones, not your tailbone. So, you shouldn't be on your tailbone at all. And then open your arms, bring your arms up into a cactus to, to find the, the optimal openness in your chest. This is all going to help with your posture, by the way, as well as everything else I just told you about getting up and down. So go ahead and do that and then come on down so you've found your good posture. Another, let's go to another position. Kathy, do you wanna do the S or Z position? So S or Z, you have one knee forward and one knee back. So this is a little harder to get, a, a, get symmetrical, right? Because you're, you're a little lopsided, but if you wanted to, you could put some washcloths under the, the, the uh, drooping hip and find some, something even, more even, and find better posture, basically. So this is another way to sit. And another way would be to sit with your knees tucked underneath you. You may, in order to do this, you might want to sit on a brick. Otherwise, that might not be available to you. One of, no, you should choose your favorite. Sit on the floor this week. Tell me how you like it. Sit more on the floor. Tell me how you like it and tell me which one you chose when you come back. So um, we're going to do a, a floor seated practice, just uh, a couple of, of movements on the floor. Um, the first thing is, so find your favorite floor seated position. Sit tall. Sit in good posture. And then we're gonna do a seated spine twist. You could also, by the way, do, be, be seated in a chair. If, if none of these are comfortable for you, sit in a chair. Sit in a chair, sit tall, or sit on the floor, sit tall. And then we're going to do a very simple spine twist. It's not gonna look like the one you did in yoga because the one you did in yoga, in your other yoga class, <laughs> is a one that involves your arms too. And I don't wanna open your shoulders, I wanna just focus on the, the thoracic spine and twist there. So this becomes a very simple movement. The first thing you're gonna do, you're gonna to twist to the right. So you're gonna take your right um, scapula towards the spine and then cross your left arm over and take your left scapula away from your spine, sit tall, find the, the height here, and that is your thoracic twist. Then you can add a cervical. Uh, twist by just turning your chin to the right over your right shoulder. Just sit tall, breathe, and, and become aware of this is a very subtle movement. The thoracic spine does not rotate very much. But become aware of it, but it's an important rotation, so an important thing to do. Come on back to center. Go to the left, so the left scapula moves towards the spine, it's called retraction. Right hand on left knee, and then the right scapula moves away or protracts from, from the spine. Sit tall, find that 
Notice the twist. It's a very small rotation. And then chin goes to the left. Stay here and breathe. Now, if you were in a, a more traditional yoga class, you would swing your arm, take your arm behind you. But then that opens the chest, but it, it takes away from the purity of the spinal twist. So I'd rather, I'm more about um, purity and function and restoring that to the body. And um, that's why I like this one. The other one's not bad. The other it's not it's not a crime to do it the other way go ahead and do <laughs> go ahead and do this again so twist to the right you reach retract the right scapula protract the left scapula and look over the right shoulder find height and breath And return. Other side. Retract the left scapula. Protract the right scapula. And then turn your chin to the left. Come on back. We'll do that one more time. So rotate right, retract the right scapula, protract the left scapula, and then turn the chin to the right. Stay here and breathe. This should feel delicious. Come on back. Other side, right? I'm losing track here, but other side. Breathing, becoming aware of your breath and aware of your movement and aware of what's happening in your scapula and your spine. This is called, when you become aware of what your body is doing, it's called embodiment. It's a, actually a big popular word now. And a popular practice, I might add, not just a word. Come on back. Very nice. You can wiggle your shoulders and whatever feels good right now, because that was actually quite a bit of it. That was quite intense. Intense practice. And then put your right hand on the floor beside you. Because so you're still in good posture. Take your left hand up and over by your ear and all the way over so that you're, you're opening the outside of the rib cage and the side body on the left and then crunching it on the right. So it's a nice side bend as far as you can go. Stay here and take a couple breaths. And if you want to, you can take your arm a little bit ahead of your head so, so that you reach, you stretch in the latissimus dorsi area again. Oh, yeah. Oh. So first side body, right? Side body, side bend, and then a lat side bend. And you should feel that all the way in your armpit. So it's first side body and then armpit. That may, might be. And then come on all the way back and do it on the other side. So up and over. Remember, the first one is a side body. You may want to bring your palms down, palm down as you um, lean or side bend to the, to the left. 
big stretch. And now a latissimus dorsi stretch, just bringing the elbow a little bit farther forward so you feel a stretch in the armpit and behind the armpit. See here. And come on back. And all the way up. Should we do it again? Yeah. Up and over. And while you do it, I'm going to tell you how important it, why it's so important to side bend and to spine twist. These are moving in the planes that we don't usually move, the side, side, transverse plane, side, side bending, and then um, moving, rotating, the rotation. So if this is, it's important to do these kinds of movements because we're always going forward. It's called the sagittal plane. We're mostly moving forward and backward. So these areas get weak, but, but if we can continue to side bend and rotate the spine, we will support the forward movement. So we're not gonna be moving sideways as much, and we're not going to be rotating as much, but we're, we wanna do this to create a strong, um, possibility of, mo of moving well when we move forward. I don't, if that, I hope that makes sense to you. Because it will mot motivate you to do a side, a side bend, side bending and spine twisting. Twists, twists and bends. Come on up. Now have we done, I've lost, since I talked about that, I've lost both. My, have we done both sides? Yeah. I've lost it. Since I didn't cue you and I was talking, I lost that one. Good. So you, you, good. you can keep track of that for me. So now the next thing we're going to do while we're seated, floor seated, is what's called flying pizza. We're going to do one at a time, I think, because I think it's easier to notice. So starting with your right um, elbow bent. It's easier for me to do it this way. It's fine. Your choice, yeah. And bent and, and facing forward, Kathy. And now, facing to, towards your middle, yeah. And now, as you move, you keep your, shoulder, your elbow tucked in, you move your arm out, and the palm comes up. That's the, that's the flying pizza part. <laughs> and then you come back, and just open up, and return. So this is a flying pizza. This, you should feel this in the upper back, uh, the rotator cuff muscles. Uh, the only thing that's really moving, that you're moving, consciously moving, is the forearm and the wrist. This is a wrist exercise also. And you, it, hopefully you feel it in the uh, upper back at the scapula. There are, um, there's a cuff of rotator muscles that hold the scapula in place, stabilize it, and uh, sometimes you know there are injuries. But this can actually help uh, stabilize and prevent, ro stabilize the rotator cuff and prevent rotator cuff injuries. And also it helps to, to treat them, to, help to cure them. And then go ahead and switch sides. Keep the elbow tucked. Open up, flying pizza, return, repeat, three to six times, slowly. Remember, slow is better. The brain catches on to what you're teaching it when you slow down. Let's come up to standing. Go ahead and shake your arms out if you need to. Um, wiggle your shoulders. Take a minute to notice as you're getting up, or maybe when you come to standing, whether uh, you feel heat or relaxation or mobility or openness in your shoulders.
come up to standing and find a counter or a railing or a chair or a wall. The first thing we're going to do is a, a movement called short foot. I have um, a colleague, a fitness colleague, Emily Switcher is her name, and um, she's, she believes, and uh, I'm inclined to go along with her, that the health of the feet is the beginning point for all movement, for all good movement. And the thing that she would have you do and what I'm going to have you do now is a movement called short foot. And uh, if you want, she has YouTube pictures of the short foot. And there are other people who tell you how to do the short foot. I think her, her method is the best. So if you're, you want to go up on YouTube and find a short foot movement, um, but this is good, specifically good for plantar fasciitis, treating, reversing plantar fasciitis. But it's good for core work because it makes a connection between the feet and the core and for glute work and um, posture work and uh, a lot of other things. So we're gonna start on the right foot. Um, is there any way you can get your camera to be closer to your feet or no? Is that just a, an impossible production? Uh, oh, oh, good, perfect, better, much better. Yeah. Who knew that yoga would include Video production. <laughs> okay. Now, so parallel feet, good posture. Then on your right foot, lift your toes, spread them, and then lower them um, and press the toe pads down. Try not to involve the metatarsals, the little um, joints behind the toes. And then wait and breathe. And what this does is it exercises the arch among, among, among the many things it does, actually, is, but it, it exercises the arch along the bottom of the foot. And you might be able to feel this, especially if you keep doing this as a practice. So go ahead and lift your right, stay on the right side, lift and spread. And then lower and press on the toe pads. And stay here and breathe. We're gonna to go to the left foot now. So, parallel feet, good posture. When I say stand, standing good posture, I'm talking about ankles, knees, hips, shoulders, and ears all stacked, all lined up. But it's gonna look a little different for you than anybody else, so have, make it your own. Go ahead and lift your toes on your left foot. Spread, lower, press on the toe pads, and take some breaths. And repeat, lift the toes, lower, Whoops, lift, spread, sorry, lift, spread, lower, press the toe pads into the mat or the floor or the book. And take some breaths. Go ahead and find a wall or a, um, a shelf or a shelf not but not something that will fall over a shelf that will fall over on you a counter um, we're going to do heel lifts but this is also a balancing movement so um, you know you that's why I'm asking you to find a wall nearby just as a safe point so you're just going to stand with parallel feet if you have a therapy ball, um, probably most of you won't because a lot of you are new, um, but if you have a therapy ball, you can end up putting that between your heels at some point. Um, the parallel feet and just lifting up the heels onto the 
So you're just standing on your toes. It's just heel lifts up and down. You can be doing this without touching a shelf, or you can be doing it touching a shelf, either one. Um, this is great for balance. This is, can you see this is that this is a toe and foot exercise, an ankle exercise? And then if you want to, if you have one, you can put a therapy ball in between your ankles and then keep going. So let's do this six more times. Unless you're exhausted and you didn't move up to the, to the, to the therapy ball mode um, and you feel like you've had enough to rest. And then go ahead and come back down and find a book or a yoga brick if you have one, a small, a, a thin yoga brick. And, uh, or for Kathy is gonna have a um, half round, which I, is actually my preferred um, move. But we're gonna do a, an ankle exercise. Um, put this, Kathy, put it against the wall. So you, you need it against something. You can't, it can't be just, yeah, otherwise it's gonna move on you. So, but for people who don't have this half round, but I do highly recommend it, by the way, it's not very expensive, it's available on Amazon. And they're great. And they're great for a lot of things, but this is the main thing I use it for, is ankle, ankle calf work. So Kathy's gonna put her right foot up on the, um, and the heel down. So the foot up, heel down on the floor. And the other foot is down. So Kathy, make your other foot, yep, yeah, standing. Okay, now, all you're gonna do here, uh, so you, if, if you don't have a half round, you can find a book, even a book that the size that Kathy has over there would be fine, or a yoga, yoga brick, or a stack of towels, although, although that would be, um, wouldn't give as much resistance because it's not as solid, just so you know. But find something that allows you to do this. And then when you're there, um, we're going to do three different ankle movements. So this is a three, three ankle stretches. Okay, now. So Kathy is going to move her ankle forward over the front of the foot. So just know that this is not a knee exercise, even though the knee follows the movement of the ankle. But if you, if you feel it in your knee, you've gone too far. This will actually help your knees because anything you do with your ankles is gonna help with your knee problems. But, so go ahead and lean, push forward with the ankle. And then just release and do that three times. Push. And this should, your ankle is probably longing for this move. It feels good. <laughs> I have this half round, two in my kitchen, on either, underneath, the, at the edge of the floor, and then one in the bathroom. So when I'm brushing my teeth, or I'm cooking, or anything like that, I'll, I'll, I'll do these stretches. After you've done three forward, then do, uh, three to the inside of the foot. So the, we're still on the right foot, but you're going to go towards the inside and do that three times. This is my favorite all around ankle, a healthy ankle movement. There are other things to do, but ankle circles comes to mind, but this is a great move. And then after you've done three, do three more to the outside. So the foot still stays where it is. It's the ankle that's moving a little bit to the outside of the foot. I can't unmute.
Leslie, I was trying to unmute you so could, I could ask you if I had given you a half round. Yes, I have one. No, oh, okay. Do you use it? Oops. <laughs> yeah. Okay, now switch to, switch to the other side. I think they, these might be $10, I'm not sure, at Amazon. Oh, I love mine. If you were in Port of Arda, I have some, a few of them in my uh, defunct s store. <laughs> it has a few items left. Okay, so forward, right? This is a, it feels like a very subtle movement, but once you start doing it, you're going to love it. And it may look a little different than what Kathy is doing. Everything, all of us move a little differently. So just, I think the important thing to know is that you're moving at the ankle and not the knee. The knee follows because the ankle, the movement of the ankle requires that the knee follows. But this is an ankle movement. And then to the inside. One of the most important places to be working that is, is neglected usually is the ankle. If you're living in Port of Arda, uh, it's really especially important to <laughs> have ankles that are strong and flexible. And go to the outside. Try not to move the foot, just the ankle. Keep the foot stable. And go ahead and come back center. What? What? Why am I getting an Why am I getting an it? I wonder if I wonder if Go ahead and lie down, everybody. I might have to mute Kathy. Go ahead and lie down where it's, we're, we're going to be closing um, meditation practice, yoga nidra. I'm going to, it's called 61 point guided meditation. You're just going to find your way onto the floor in a comfortable, supine position on your back. With your knees bent or your legs can be extended. I am going to uh, stop my video. So that I don't have to watch myself talk. I'm going to guide you through. I'm reading a um, 61 point guided meditation that was developed by Swami Rama at the Himalayan International Institute of Yoga Science and Philosophy. I think at the turn of the century. Go ahead, I'm going to ask you to pay attention to different body parts, but not move them. So start with your breath, just breathing in and out. Breathing in and out, and now bring your awareness to the muting Kathy, because there's been there's some background noise, but it might be someone else. Please mute yourself if you're, if you're not muted. There must be someone else because I've muted Kathy. I can see it's Claudia. I'm good. No, it's not Claudia. Hold on. Okay. Um, bring your awareness to the center of your eyebrows, the center of your throat, right shoulder, elbow, wrist, right thumb, second finger, third finger, fourth finger, 
fifth finger, right wrist, elbow, right shoulder, center of your throat, left shoulder, elbow, wrist, left thumb, second finger, third finger, fourth finger, fifth finger, left wrist, left elbow, shoulder, center of your throat, spiritual heart center, right side of your chest, heart center, left side of your chest, heart center, navel center, center of your pelvis, right hip, right knee, right ankle, right big toe, second toe, third toe, fourth toe, fifth toe, right ankle, knee, hip, center of your pelvis, left hip, left knee, ankle, left big toe, second toe, third toe, fourth toe, fifth toe, left ankle, knee, hip, center of your pelvis, navel center, heart center, center of your throat, center of your eyebrows. This completes our 61 point guided meditation. Just stay here and notice your breath. And then go ahead and extend your legs if they're bent and stretch your body. Bring your arms overhead, stretch your body in both directions, trying to create a little bit of dist more distance between your rib cage and your top of your pelvis. Wiggle your fingers and your toes. Right side, left side. And hug your right knee to your chest, your left knee to your chest. Both knees to your chest and rock from side to side, slowly. Whenever you're ready, roll to, towards the camera. Stay here for a breath or two. Don't get up too soon. You'll get, you might get dizzy. Then, when you're ready, take your right hand, your top hand, and bring yourself up to seated. Find a comfortable floor seated position so we can close the class with Namaste. Just go ahead and bring your palms together. At your heart. I'm going to, um, well, now there, good. I, I, I took um, Kathy off uh, pin video so I could see all your faces or at least your names. So let, palms to the heart. Remember that nod, the, the nod that we practiced in the beginning? So the C1 glide, you're going to just glide your skull over the top of the, of the C1. Nod. And we're going to close the class by saying to each other, Namaste. Oh, I should unmute you all, but I don't know how to do that. Namaste, everybody. If I'm going to stop the recording.